Okay, guys, so we should be all back here. Uh, sorry, I had to restart the meeting because um, it was not letting people in. So hopefully now it should be all fixed. All right, guys, so let's get going. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a machine learning with Python. It's a preview class, but we are actually going to start um, um, start with the curriculum. Um, I know we have a few more people coming in. So I want to make sure everybody has access to the, um, to the group, the notes I'm looking at. Right, so this is the class notes. I'll put this on Zoom in case. Right, so this is the only document you guys need. Um, I'm gonna put all the links and everything in here. Okay, so it's already sent out to you guys by email. Um, so you guys already in Zoom. Okay, so I will walk through the setup uh, in a minute. Uh, again, we don't need the setup today because we probably won't get into the labs, but I want you guys to kind of get ready because they, remember this is the first day of a four day class uh, and we are gonna, we are gonna you know, need the labs uh, ready to go uh, in the next section, right? So, so this is the guide. So if you just click through here in the setup, it'll walk you through step by step um, how to set up your own machines. I will go through this a little later, but I just want to make sure you guys have know how uh, this exists and you need to go through this one before attending the, uh, continuing on to the class. Not today though, right? The, the starting next week. Okay. And if you can scroll down a bit in the class notes, if you can see, see, see my screen, if you scroll down a bit, the second, second, um, uh, second page, I want to do a very quick intro. Uh, this is me. Uh, my name is um, Suji Maniam. I'm teaching this class um, today as a preview class and also next week, four days. Uh, I'm a founder of Elephant Scale. Uh, we basically do uh, training and consulting uh, in big data and data science. Uh, we started with uh, Hadoop uh, a while ago, right? So Hadoop is now almost 15 years old. Uh, we started with Hadoop uh, consulting and training, but, but these days we do a lot more in data science AI, machine learning, deep learning. So kind of, you know, we kind of follow the technology trend. Um, <clears throat> a couple of books and also published a course with O'Reilly um, last year, a couple of years ago. And my contact details are actually in the notes, right? So if you scroll down, uh, here's me. So feel free to shoot me an email uh, and also you know, find me on LinkedIn. Right, so that's me. I would typically do a, um, introduction uh, of the class partisan, but we are too many. <laughs> so I'll skip that for today. But what I do want to have is I want to have you guys do a quick background survey, right? So if you just could do me a favor, you see here the link I'm highlighting. There's a quick background survey. I want to understand your background. So please go here and let me know just three or four questions. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background and the technologies you're familiar with, right? So right now we are doing this guys, okay? Can everybody see my screen and I being able to get to the, um, get to the survey, yep. Yeah. So yeah, and, and please go out and type in the questions on the chat window guys, so we will keep the line clear, right? Um, and I, 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 will, I, will, I will try to get to your questions. Right, so one of the questions I had was, do we need Docker? Uh, no, uh, Docker is optional, right? And I will walk you guys through that uh, in a minute. Uh, right now, if you guys uh, wouldn't mind, can you guys do the, um, the background survey real quick? So let's see what your backgrounds are. Suji? Yeah, please go ahead. I can hear you. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I, I, had a, I got kicked out of the meeting and I had to come back in. Where is the survey? Oh, so in the, yeah. So do you see my screen here? Yeah. So you guys already yes. in the, yeah, you guys already have the link to this page, right? Yeah. So scroll down and the survey is right here. Okay. Yep. Yep. So 
the URL that I sent out to you guys has all the links. That's the only thing you guys need. Okay, so. All right, so let's take a minute, just you know, three or four questions, just so you know, I, I understand your background a little better. Um, or I guess if you're just joining us, um, welcome. And uh, I trust you already have the link to the uh, the class document. Uh, I'm walking us through this one. So please scroll down a bit. And what we are doing right now is the uh, background survey, right? You see what I'm highlighting, right? So just, just take a few seconds. Please uh, uh, tell me a little bit about your background. All right, guys, let's see here, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, so we get a decent amount of responses here. Um, very good. Let's see, uh, so pretty sizable uh, developers. Okay, yep. We have a couple of data scientists as well. Good, good. And um, look at the language matrix. Let's see which one's most popular. All right, SQL, everyone's comfortable with. Got it. So let's look at the machine learning real quick. So most of you kind of know, you know, you know, some, you know some of the fundamentals, right, of machine learning. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the profile we expect for the class like this. And also I'm looking at the Python, let's see. Yeah, so most of you kind of you know, know some of the basics, that's good. The reason uh, those are the two important things is those are the ones we are going to actually use in our class, right? Python and machine learning. Um, so this is the intro of machine learning. Um, so you know, we don't expect any uh, previous knowledge of machine learning, but I'm just curious if you guys knew machine learning already, right? So, yeah. All right, good, this is good. All right, um, <laughs> ice cream, all right, and chocolate, all right. So that has to be it. All right, so this is important. I wanna kind of understand what machines are you gonna be using? Uh, looks like a pretty solid majority of you on Windows. Um, and then Mac and then full of learning. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. All right, guys. So <clears throat> this is good. So thanks for filling this out, right? This sort of, you know, gives me a pretty good idea of the, you know, of the class mix. And uh, when I teach this, I like to customize um, the class for, for your background. And so kind of the key takeaways, you know, and you can see my screen too, I'm looking, looking at the live responses here, right? So most of us are developers, right? And most of us are kind of, you know, sort of, you know, Python, you sort of, you know, know a little bit of Python, right? Um, some of the machine learning concepts, right? Um, and then most of us are on Windows, right? So good, good, this is good. All right, guys, so thanks for filling this out. Um, let me walk through the logistics a little bit more. And again, you know, if, if you're sort of just going through this, just go ahead and finish this. Uh, I'll collect all the results and publish this. Um, also, uh, we do have some class materials for you guys to download. And the instructions are right here. See what I'm highlighting? Okay. 
So very simple, just simply go to the URL, just click on this, right? And then punch in your name. And then uh, what the system is gonna do is gonna send you documents by email. So make sure you enter an email that's valid. And for the code, very simple, just simply copy paste this code right here, okay? And what you will find is uh, check your inbox and the system will start uh, sending material. So I have a couple of slides for today. Uh, so I want you guys to have that, right? All right, so again, very simple. Here's the steps, step by step, go to the URL, punch in your name and email, and then it's asking for the code, copy this code, right? And we can check your email. We should see, let's see how many documents. There should be about seven documents, right? Should be coming to your way. Good, I see you guys are already sign, signing in, so yeah, that's good. So seven documents, please, we should get seven emails. So it emails each document you know, in an email, right? Uh, if, you, if you did sign up and not getting any emails, uh, you know, give it, a, give it a minute, uh, it'll come in soon. And also sometimes check your spam folder uh, because sometimes it ends up in spam folder. Uh, if it is in spam folder, please take it out of spam folder, right? So the, the other emails will come to your inbox. All right, guys, so you sort of go into the logistics real quick. All right, guys, so anybody signed in and not getting any materials, please do let me know. Right, because um, I'll see what's going on. Uh, usually, the system is pretty good about emailing, and it'll just show up. Just give it a few minutes; it'll show up. It has to go through all the you know spam filters and everything. Right? All right. So we are at this point filling this out. Also, guys, if you just joined us, welcome. Um, I, we are going through the document, so that you guys already have the link to the document, right? I'll put this in the Zoom again. Um, this is the, the class notes we are going through. Um, the first page is um, logistics, right? Yes, you know. So you guys already went through that, so that's fine. We are going to the second page. Here's my contact details. And for the materials today, uh, here's the materials, right? So you can just simply go to the page, enter your details, and also enter this code to get the materials. And also when you get a, get a minute, please complete the background survey. And so I, I understand your background as well, okay? So that's what we are doing right now, guys. All right, any questions so far, guys? So again, for, uh, for here, right, when you, when you go to this one, very simply, right, you simply enter your name and e you know, email and then enter the code and that's it, right? And then you say register, that's all that is, there's nothing else, okay? So you should have about seven documents in your email.
All right, guys. So let me quickly see um, how you guys are doing with the logistics. I want to I want to make sure we all good to go here. And I guess very good. So it looks like, yeah, um, you guys are able to, right? Ah, uh, that's right. Should be about seven files, uh, seven emails. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm sending in a, a a little bit more than what we are going to cover today, um, because you know I like to give you guys more than what you, what you should do in the class. Um, you know these are for your reference, right? So these are yours. Uh, download them and save them, and that's right. And and we'll go through some of them in the in the class next week as well. But anyway, these are yours. All right, guys, so good. So we're kind of done with the logistics. <clears throat> right, uh, so we are you know, getting emails. We should get seven emails, uh, one for each document. So check those. Uh, anybody having trouble, let me know, right? So uh, if you only got you know, a few emails, please I'll check the spam folder as well. All right, so I want to very quickly um, um, highlight some of the content we are going to cover. Uh, remember, this is sort of the you know, first part of the AA four-day class, right? So uh, we are doing a preview because uh, machine learning is a hot topic, but a lot of the time uh, people are not sure if this is you know this is the right thing for me. Right? So um, the idea is a preview class, no obligation. You know, you guys are here. Uh, we are going to you know um, get you guys started with machine learning, and if you guys like. Uh, you guys can sort of enroll in our and this course is going to continue on next week, right? So next week we are doing four days evenings, um, and this is what we are going to be covering. And you know, you guys have the document already. This is num slide number one for you guys, right? So we are going to be using machine learning with Python, and basically, you know, these are the topics we are going to be covering. So it'll say two days, right? But remember, this is two full days, um, so it's being split into four days because usually, you know, um, night and weekend is what you know, works for a lot of people. So we are running this class uh, across four days, evenings. I cannot set six to nine, um, right? I don't really specify the time frame. The reason is uh, we don't know how people are going to log in from different time zones. Uh, and then we, depending on the time zone, we will figure out like which six to nine it is, right? If most, if most people are on the West Coast, we will do, you know, uh, six to nine Pacific, right? Most people are going to be East Coast, six to nine, you know, um, uh, uh, EST. Right? So, uh, so six to nine kind of vague. Again, I say, I just want to make sure uh, to accommodate as many people as possible, right? Uh, so this outline should give you a pretty good idea of what we are going to cover, right? Again, like I said, uh, the skill level we are looking for is beginner to intermediate. So we don't assume any any previous knowledge of um, machine learning. 
we're going to start from scratch and teach you guys machine learning, but from a, excuse me, very practical perspective, right? Because, you know, um, as you see, most of us are engineers. Um, so we're going to talk about machine learning, how an engineer would learn machine learning. How do we apply, solve problems? And these are some of the problems that we're going to be solving, right, in, in our class. So you can see things like, you know, house price prediction, you know, how do you predict a loan is going to fail, right? Um, how do you know when somebody has diabetes, um, right? So things like this, right? And how do you know if a, a text message is a spam? So these are, you know, very practical issues we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're going to sh show you guys how to, you know, how to solve them using machine learning. So what are the prereqs? Again, basic programming background, even though we are going to be using Python. Um, I sort of said, you know, family with Python is nice, uh, but it's not mandatory. The reason is, if you have some programming background, learning with Python is very easy, right? Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, Java, I'm a Java programmer, right? And, uh, you know, I could pick up Python very easily. Uh, so it's, you know, a lot, a lot of other people. So as long as you have some decent programming background, you should pick up Python as you go along. Uh, I am giving you some Python resources. Uh, so for example, um, here, um, if you just look at the, um, the setup guide instruction, right? If you just look at the setup guide, at the bottom, I'm giving you some Python resources. Uh, these are all free and very good resources online. Uh, so you can sort of go through them. These are a lot of online videos, online tutorials, and you can pick up Python pretty easily. Right, so don't 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 let the fact you know you are not familiar with Python cannot deter you, right? Like I said, and I always say Python is such a nice language, an easy language to learn from. So that's why we always say a plus, not you know, not you know, not mandatory. And also, we don't need you to know any machine learning. Right? Like we're going to, that's what you you are in the class. We're going to teach you guys from scratch. Um, so usually uh, this is the same class. Um, we teach for you know uh, enterprise companies like you know Cisco, T-Mobile, uh, Walmart. Uh, for them, usually we provide a cloud-based environment. Uh, but you, since this is a public class, what I would prefer is we would actually have. I want you guys to have your own uh, laptop set up with the environment, right? And and you know, I have a setup document I will go through in a minute. So for example, so um, uh, no cloud environment. We expect you guys to provide your own laptop with your own um, environment setup. Right? And we will give you guys instructions. So anyway, and then you can look at the detail outlines. All right. So um, so we're going to look at some of the. Um, you know, we're actually going to start looking at some of the content today. Like for example, we look at machine learning overview, understanding terminologies and, and the vocabulary and all that. Right. All that we will cover today. Uh, and then also, I want to guys, I want to give give you guys instructions to set up your lab, uh, laptops. Right. So next week you guys are ready to go. Anyway, so that's kind of the idea. Right. So this preview class again. It's completely, you know, uh, completely free for you guys. You can audit this and then say, yeah, you know, maybe this is not for me or this is for me. And based on this, you can sign up. Uh, if you do decide to sign up, um, what I recommend you guys do is um, here's a link for you guys at the bottom. Uh, the class starts next week. Um, so here's a link for you guys. And it's a paid class, but however, you know, you use this, there's like a discount code for you guys in this class. Uh, you can apply this code. Right? when you apply for this link, uh, when, you, when you sign up. So it'll give you a discount. So, right. And then we also have a webinar coming up this Friday. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna walk you through some of the um, setup instructions uh, on how to uh, set up your, you know, your machines with Python for and data science. So I, I'm gonna put this link um, uh, when I have it during a break, but yeah, if you have some time, definitely uh, attend the webinar. Oh, at least sign up and we will send you guys a recording, right? So it'll, it'll answer some of the questions like, you know, what version of Python to install, you know, how to install it, all that. So, okay. Good question. So question is like, um, how much time? Uh, right, so good question. So, uh, so we are next week, we are doing four days, right? Monday to Thursday uh, evenings. And, and I know, you know, I mean, you know, it's a kind of challenging, right? Because you have, you know, daytime work and family and kids and everything. Uh, I would, I would like, at the, so the class will be very fast paced because, you know, as you can see, we cover a lot of things, right? Uh, we, you know, we start from scratch and, you know, we cover, you know, a lot of machine learning concepts and algorithms. So class will go very rapid pace. Uh, however, what I would recommend is after the class, uh, I want you guys to spend some time practicing. And that's why I'm very bullish. Um, I'm really encouraging you guys to set up your own machine 
uh, because you know, then you have a local environment to practice because the cloud instances will go away, right, after the class. So that's why we are not even doing cloud instances. We are encouraging you to set up your own environment uh, so you can practice, keep practicing, All right? So, um, yeah, I didn't check the pricing. Um, I haven't looked at the latest pricing yet, but yeah, whatever the price is, uh, minus 20%. Yep, exactly. So, um, uh, so you guys can sign up, you know, go through the link and then you will see the uh, event price, link, right? So the webinar is free, right? We know a lot of all the webinars are free. And then this is the paid class. Uh, and you, you guys are attending sort of the first part of the paid class, right? So, all right. I also get um, questions like, uh, can I do a weekend class? We could. Um, if you're interested in a weekend class, um, shoot me an email, right? You know, my email is right here, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, uh, you know, we, if there's enough interest, we'll set up a weekend class. So, all right. Uh, just to give you a background, guys, you know, like, I mean, so, you know, um, in a lot of, you know, um, Elephant Scale, uh, the company I'm founder at, uh, we are a training and consulting company. Most of the training we do are for enterprises, right? Like a, you know, a team training. Uh, coming like Cisco, Walmart, Intuit, like these guys. So we are just starting with the public classes because we get a lot of requests uh, for individuals wanting to learn machine learning. So we're just launching this. So, you know, right? So we'll kind of figure, the, figure out the best option, whether it's weekends, whether it's nights, uh, whether it's daytime, we'll figure it out. Okay, so just just drop me an email if you're interested, and maybe you can you're busy next week. You want a different class, so okay. All right, guys, make sense. Okay, so that's it. So that's pretty much all the marketing. <laughs> right, you guys have all the link. Uh, so now you're going to get into the class. Uh, any questions? Anybody else? Okay, so um, okay, interesting. So. Um, Looks like the SciPy lectures is not working. Um, so uh, let me kind of walk you guys through that. Um, here's the thing, right? So uh, um, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for letting me know. I will, I'll, I'll see if I can fix that. All right, guys. So, so far, I want you guys to basically have the materials ready, get the survey, and then, um, you know, these are the next steps, right? Okay. Let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, any other questions on the chat window? All right, guys, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to mute the line, right? So if you have any questions, please, um, uh, uh, please uh, chat in the chat window, right? So this way we can keep the line clear. Okay, thank you, guys. Yeah, I'll keep the line muted. All right, cool. All right, so that's that. So you guys have the links and everything for the next week class. Uh, let me know if you need, you know, alternate time and we'll figure it out. So we are gonna go through the setup document, okay? So again, the class notes, this is the link, right? So click on the link, it should take you to the setup guide. Now, this is going to walk you through setting up your own laptop. And since we are using Python, it should work pretty much seamlessly on um, uh, Mac, Linux, or Windows. Uh, personally, I am using, uh, I have a Mac and a Linux. I'm actually running this class from my Linux desktop, right? So it should be, you know, it should be, you know, it should be able to um, uh, uh, work pretty problem free. If you do have any questions, like let's say you're trying to set up machines and you're running into issues, what I'm gonna recommend is you actually post to this discussion group. Uh, we monitor this and, you know, we will, we will answer this. And also, you know, some of the time, you know, uh, your fellow students will answer this for you. Right, because sometimes you send me an email, you know, I may not be able to, you know, I may be, you know, it could be buried in my inbox, uh, but if you answer, post in the group, uh, you get a response much quicker, right? So if you have any questions, any, any running into any issues, please post here, right? All the links are right here for you guys. Okay, so let me go to the setup document. Uh, we are gonna use Python, we are gonna use Python version three, right? Now, this shouldn't be a problem for most of you, uh, because, you know, most of you are probably starting with Python uh, and then Python three, but let's say you are working on Python, you have a version two Python. And so what I would recommend in the case is, um, let me just do here, um, I'll just type it here. Uh, if you have if you have to have uh, Python two, then set up a different uh, uh, environment, right? And the steps are a little beyond the steps of the class, but if you Google around, you know, there are a lot of guides they will show you how to have uh, Python 3 and Python 2 side by side, right? 
So, so these are called virtual environment. Okay, so, uh, so if you use Google around, you know, you will see it. So I'm not going to go into it right now because you know it's a little involved, but the steps are pretty straightforward if you need to have that. Okay. All right, guys. So um, that's Anaconda. You download, install, and install this. And if you ask me why I'm using Anaconda, um, the reason we all prefer Anaconda is it's a very nice Python distribution. It has all the necessary packages already bundled together. Um, so you don't have to kind of you know do like a you know like a ten different uh, uh, download ten different packages using Python pip. You install Anaconda and it's all done, and it's all tested to make sure they all work properly. Right. So yeah, so that's why we recommend uh, you guys use Anaconda. Uh, even if you have vanilla Python, like I mean, if you have a Mac, if you have Linux, you probably have like a you know Python installed. Uh, still go ahead and get Anaconda. The reason I recommend this is Anaconda actually installs in its own user directory. So it doesn't touch any of your system Python. So you can just leave it alone, right? It's not gonna mess up any of your startup scripts. So this is going to be in your user space, right? So that's why we highly, highly recommend Anaconda. If you don't like it, just, you know, delete the directory and it's, that's, it's gone, right? Um, so uh, definitely get Anaconda Python, even if you have a system Python install, okay? All right, so that's step one. And if you guys go to the installer, and if you go to the Anaconda website, they will walk you through step by step how to install that. Now, step two, and this is kind of optional, but I highly recommend it. Um, so this is step one, you need to, must do, right? You had to do this. Step two, um, recommended. Um, because machine learning is all about data, right? And there are a lot of data files uh, available. Uh, here you can just download some of our, you know, our data data uh, data files. Uh, this is data we actually have curated. You know, we have, sometimes we have cleaned up data, simplified data. All right, so you know you can download this, and it's most of the stuff we have is public data, nothing nothing private. All right, so you can download data link. So that's it. So these are the pretty much the two steps you guys need. Now, if you cannot run nat Python natively, another option we provide is we have a Docker image. So the URL is here, basically in your family Docker, simply, you know, just pull this one and it's a download Docker. And basically you can run our Docker and if you follow the instruction there, it'll, it'll help you set up the Docker. Now remember, this is an optional one, right? You don't need to do this. This is if you want to install Docker. Um, this is the same Docker image we use for enterprise training. So it's, you know, it's set up with like things like Spark and Kafka and all, you know, all, and all the rest. But for machine learning, uh, you should be able to just do, you know, with these, okay. And I know Thomas kind of message everybody, so you know I, I want to, yeah, just very quickly. Uh, Thomas, you know Thomas, you know sort of handles our classes. So if you have any questions, uh, Thomas, you want to maybe enter your email here. So they, you know I actually put your email also in the um, uh, the document as well. So all right. Also, yeah. So Thomas, email here too. All right, so you can email him as well. So if you have any sign up issues, uh, things like that, uh, Thomas will uh, help you guys. Yeah, very good, thanks Thomas. Cool. All right guys, so that's basically the setup. Now, um, uh, let me do a quick poll. I'm kind of curious um, if anybody has Anaconda, so I'm just, let me just do like a quick poll here. Um, So let me see if this works here. So can you guys tell me um, what you you know what you guys uh, um, have if if you kind of went through the setup or you're going to you know um, right what are you thinking for your um, for your to practice machine learning right? All right, very good, very good. Okay. So yeah, so there's a there's a poll going on in your Zoom meeting. So if you can take a take a look and let me know. Yeah, 
I'm kind of curious what you guys are planning to do. And the reason um, I'm, I want to sort of get all of this out of the way today, guys, is once we start next week, um, class will go very quickly, right? So we won't have a lot of time to kind of, you know, stop and debug um, labs and things. So I kind of want you, that's why we are doing this a week ahead. Um, so, you know, you guys have time to kind of, you know, go through the setup and be ready because I definitely want you guys to get the most out of the class, right? So we don't want to waste too much time uh, troubleshooting and all that. Excellent guys, very good. So, okay, that's pretty good. Um, so it looks like a lot of you already have Anaconda 3. That's very nice. Okay, that's perfect. Um, let me let me sort of share the results, right? So you can sort of see here. Yeah, so that's very good. So again, if you, if you haven't done it, so please install Anaconda. You know, you have like a week to get ready. Uh, if you're using Docker, um, it should be pretty straightforward. But if you have any questions, post on the mailing list. Uh, we'll help you guys out. Exactly, yeah, like you said, Anaconda is just like five minutes, exactly, yeah. Cool. So guys, um, again, uh, I don't think we will we'll get into any labs today. Um, so there's no need to kind of, you know, do it right now, but you know, you have like a week. Yeah, if, if, you, uh, if you choose to come to the class next week, uh, that's why we are working, I'm working you through this one, right? Um, another one I'm gonna give you guys, this is, um, this is using um, cloud environment. Uh, Google call app. Let me give you guys this one. Okay. All right, so you guys can hopefully see my screen here. Um, This is a pretty nice option. Uh, let me just put this one in. Um, this is called Google Call App. I don't know if anybody used it, but it's a pretty nice, I mean, you, know, you just click on the link right here, you know, you can sort of see what I'm highlighting, right? And you should see a page that looks like this. All right. What Call App is, it's like Gmail. You know, it's like a hosted machine learning environment. Uh, basically to, to, to do, you know, any of the, um, um, uh, any of the, uh, 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 if you don't want, you know, like I said, there's no zero setup. You just had to go, basically go to the URL and, you know, um, start running the notebooks. That's it, All right? And another cool thing about Google Call App is uh, they have access to GPUs. Uh, uh, we'll talk about this in the next section, which is, Pretty nice, trust me when I tell you, like, you know, the uh, GPUs are kind of expensive on the cloud. So it's, it's nice to have access to free GPU resource. Anyway, so this is another option. I'll, I'll show you guys how to run our labs in Colab as well, right? So um, and when, you, when you get to the labs, I'll show you. The, but, you know, in this case, I want to make sure uh, you guys have access to Google and, you know, all you need is a Google account, right? So, um, uh, you know, I mean, these days pretty much everybody has it. So, and it's free. Uh, just like Gmail, right? so. Uh, but so, you know, kind of, you know, give it a try, see if you can log in. Uh, you know, we're not gonna do any labs at the moment, uh, but I just wanna make sure, give you guys this option as well. All right, this is literally zero setup, meaning there's nothing to install on your machine, right, or into the browser. And when you get to the labs, we'll run a lab, sample lab in the call lab as well. Cool, all right guys, so that's pretty much it. And again, the so Python resources and, um, I know some of you said one of the links is not working. Which one was it? Oh, the SciPy lectures. Okay, yeah. So let me see. Just if the links are not working, guys. You know, just gonna do like a um, Google search, right? Because you know, as you know, li li links always move around. Yeah. What's the, what's the link? Okay, maybe this one here. Oh yeah, yeah. So anyway, so sometimes you know links move around. So you know, just you know, um, if you know, the thing, it doesn't work, just Google around and you'll find the latest link, right? Okay. Oh yeah, so the question is why not Google Call App? Um, good question, because in Call App, um, yes, it's free, it works, but there are, there are some restrictions. For example, uh, let's say if you need to include your own custom module, it's not very straightforward with Colab, right? So yeah, for, for 
Colab will work sort of 70, 80% of the time, most of the time. But let's say you have like a, you know, your own module you want to import and use. Uh, it's a little tricky to do in Colab, right? So yeah, uh, so maybe, you know, maybe you, you would never run this scenario and it'll just work, you know, you'll be perfectly happy. So that's why we actually do give you the option, right? So, um, right, you know. but uh, it's also recommended, you know, um, a lot of people like to, you know, work on the laptop, especially when you have large amounts of data, all uh, right, working on laptops a little faster, right? So, because, um, yeah. Anyway, so like both of us open in the Colab, it's a very nice, a nice environment. I use it a lot on a daily basis, uh, especially you know, when you want to use GPUs, right? So it's, it's pretty convenient, yeah. So definitely, definitely give it a try. We definitely want you guys to be familiar with all the environments. Uh, yeah, so the question was um, like, you know, what time zone? Uh, it's kind of hard to answer right now. Here's the thing, right? Um, sign up and you know, if you guys think, hey, I cannot make the class, uh, you know, uh, you can just get the refund. Right, so I mean, so there's no need to no need to worry. Um, like you know, you signed up using you know thinking that maybe you know that's not the new time zone. Uh, that's fine. You can always get a full refund from Eventbrite. Um, so yeah, so no pressure, right? Good guys. I think we walked through um, uh, pretty much everything here. Anything else? Any other question on the setup? Again, the goal is for you guys to have your own um, machine learning environment, so you can practice um, after the training is done. I think so, yeah, again, um, Thomas kind of knows this. Um, the promo code should work, I believe so, yeah. So I think, you know, the, the, the code I just gave you guys, yeah, that should be valid. Uh, I don't know if you still have Thomas online, but um, yeah, that should be valid. So you can sign up whenever you guys want, yeah. ES20, yep. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like I said, no, the reason we do the preview class is like, like I said, you know, because I know some of the time people are, you know, skeptical, you know, do you really want this class? Is it right for me? So this way you get audit this, you know, you, you get to see your materials and our labs and, you know, um, so this way, you know, no, no pressure, right? So, all right guys, so if there's nothing else, let's um, go to the next section. Any other questions? Uh, please type in the chat window. Um, right, <laughs> right, so the materials, right? So yes, um, actually, you know, I just sent you guys uh, materials for like, you know, just so I don't know if you can see my screen here. Um, so I just sent you guys the first seven slides, right? Um, uh, some of them are for your references. Uh, some of them will go in the class. Like for example, we are gonna go through the um, machine learning primer right now, right? Uh, but as you can see, right? I mean, for the rest of the class, we have, you know, you know, we have about 15, 16 slides. So like I said, this is a very packed class. Uh, we always give you a lot of materials because like I said, machine learning is, you know, right? It's a pretty hefty subject. So we won't be able to cover everything in the class, but we will give you all the reference materials. So definitely, yeah. So you guys got like, you know, maybe like a, probably like a, maybe like a, you know, half a day worth of materials uh, so far. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a lot of materials, yeah, that's true. All right, guys, um, what else here? Yeah, anything else, logistics again. So kind of where are we on this one? We went through our steps, right? So now you guys have the materials. Um, I give you guys the uh, next steps with the discount codes if you wanna sign up. Um, any questions, please discussion group. And then please go to the setup document, right? Um, to set up your own, all right? I mean, this is like literally zero install, right? Or your laptop or Google Cloud, either one. And if you wanna sort of, you know, um, brush up on some Python, uh, here's a bunch of resources. Um, just kind of, you know, if you're an experienced developer, uh, just spend a couple of hours, you know, looking at the basic syntax and things like that, right? Uh, because <clears throat> let me give you my example, like, you know, I'm a Java programmer, um, right? Um, so, you know, when I, when I studied Python, I don't have to worry about, you know, like variables and object oriented, because you know, I know all this, right? So all I'm looking for is like a, how to do this in, in Python, right? That's it, right? So yeah, so you'll pick it up very quickly. By the way, guys, the code and everything is in the document you already have. So it's in the class document. Scroll all the way down, right? The, um, yeah, the code is here, okay? So basically ES20, right? So you know, so, you, you, so yeah, you just have the, it's in the document. If it's not working or anything, shoot me an email. We will see what's going on, yep. All right, guys, so that's it. I think we are done with all the sort of the logistics and setup. 
um, these documents you guys have access to, so you can you know do them anytime. Um, and thanks for filling out the um, you know the responses. This is great. So let's get going. So what I'm going to go through, I'm actually going to go through a couple of slides um, today. So let's it's almost seven o'clock. So we'll probably go through maybe like a one or two decks, and then um, uh, we'll continue next week. Okay. All right, guys. So about the class. So hopefully you can see my screen here. I'm sharing my screen, uh, my slides. So this is slide deck um, number two for you guys, right? Slide deck number two. So this is a quick overview of the class. So when we um, started writing this class, uh, we, you know, we were thinking like, you know, how do people learn machine learning? Like, how can we teach machine learning for engineers? Because I'm an engineer, right? I'm not a PhD. How would I learn? So we wanted to write a machine learning class that is very practical. So imagine you are a, um, let's say you're a Java programmer. You're going to learn Python. How will you do it? Right? We go look at some examples. We write some code. We try it out, and then we say, "Oh yeah, now I see how this is working, right?" And if you want to sort of, you know, a little bit, you know, once once you have the code working, you do a little deeper dive and say, "Oh, you know, what's going on? What what are the concepts?" Right. So that's how we engineers learn. So this kind of learning is what we call top-down learning. And this was the, the the reason we prefer this is, like a lot of the time, if you go and ask uh, somebody, "I want to learn machine learning. What should I do?" You might get advice like. Um, go learn linear algebra, uh, go learn calculus, right? Go learn advanced math. And that's fine, you know, like a lot of the machine learning is built on, you know, on these advanced math concepts. But these topics, you know, linear algebra, calculus, all these things, you know, they're, they you know, hard subjects, right? I don't know about you guys. I mean, I didn't really, you know, <laughs> I didn't really enjoy these in college, right? So, and a lot of the people will start, you know, they will start some, you know, with some textbook, you know, running some linear algebra, matrix, matrix operations, and pretty soon they will give up because you know it's not it's not you know it's, it's a very, very hard thing to kind of keep going, right? So we sort of flip this, and the way we are doing this is like this: top down, meaning we are going to teach you the fundamentals of machine learning, and we are going to show you guys how to implement them in a code, right? It could be like in you know, a Python, Spark. So in our case, Python, right? So like how an engineer will learn: learn the algorithm, apply the algorithm, and then tweak the algorithm. So we are not going to go too deep into the math stats um, of machine learning in this class, because you know, we really cannot do it justice. Uh, I will give you guys pointers. Like, let's say you are really interested in the math behind an algorithm, you can easily go find out. Because there are a lot of textbooks. Uh, Wikipedia has even pretty good you know, math coverage of algorithms. Right? So we'll give you guys all the reference links if you really want to go sort of, you know, uh, deep dive into the math. But we are not going to, be, uh, I'm not going to go into it uh, by today, you know, into the class, right? So uh, one of the questions, so question is like, what's covered today? Uh, very quickly, uh, let me do this um, very quickly, guys. So what I'm gonna go through is I'm gonna go through slide deck number four, which is looking at machine learning. Uh, we want to understand some of the, you know, what type of machine learning there are, what are the algorithms, what are the terminologies, like a very good overview, right? So that's what we are gonna go through today. Yeah, so. All right, guys. So again, we talked about the expectations. Um, basically, you know, like I said, development background, right? You know, but remember this is the course for engineers, right? Um, I don't know if you guys um, uh, noticed this um, and people come, come and say, me, and I don't know math, that's fine. Because, you know, like I said, this course, right? We don't need a math prereq. Uh, pretty much only, only thing, you know, if, if you had to learn something, uh, I would say Python. And even then, right? Python is very easy to learn, so. Okay. So like I said, right? So I talked about this, you know, you don't have to sort of, you know, go through the sort of the linear algebra and, you know, all this. You can start from the top down approach. So I want to show you guys this. This is the aim for the class. So I, since training is our business, you know, we look at a lot of other trainings, how people are training. Um, and a lot of the time, machine learning is done at sort of the, you know, um, so, you know, using like, a, you know, just, you know, I'm sure you guys have been to like a lot of the meetups. You know, somebody will show you a notebook and they say, click here, right? You click the button and everything runs. It spits out some output. And we're like, yeah, you know, we've done machine learning. And I've been to this minor, my share of these meetups too, uh, right? And I kind of say, okay, okay, what have I learned? All I did here was I just click a button, right? And you know, something ran and it spit out some output. I have no idea what this output means, right? So, so this is not something I would recommend, 
right? Because at this point, you're just, you know, just memorizing code, right? What's the point? Because, you know, APIs change all the time. What we really want to do is basically get to this level. It's called ML engineers. So what I mean by that is, not only we know how to write the code, we also understand um, what the algorithm is doing. And right? what's, what's going on, you know, why the algorithm is doing this way. So you have a fundamental idea of an algorithm. Like imagine you are a programmer, you're calling a function. You have no idea what the function does, right? Like black box, but that's here. And that's, that's not a way of you know, learning anything, right? So we actually want you to sort of you know, demystify and say, okay, this is what the algorithm is and this is what we are going to, you know, we are going to do, right? So this is the goal for this class, ML engineers. And you guys can try this now. You can go to like, you know, um, now then there's a new designation of job. It's called ML engineer, right? If you guys go to like Indeed or something, right? And then there's a new category called, you know, machine learning engineers, right? And that's it, San Jose, yeah. Right? So you can sort of start finding, right? So this is the new category, which, you know, we haven't seen maybe, you know, five years ago. ML engineers, and it pays pretty well too. <laughs> right? So, so that's a category we are aiming for, right? Not data scientists, because data science, you know, when I say, when I look at data, when I say data scientist, uh, I sort of mean, you know, I, I look at people who you know who are actually have pretty good, you know, fundamentals like you know math, you know, uh, we start PhDs usually, right? But you can be machine learning engineer, and you know that's a pretty rewarding job as it is, right? So the new category, and this is what we are targeting. Right? Because a lot of our, a lot of our audience tend to be from engineering background, right? Not sort of data science background. Anyway, so hopefully you know this made sense, right? What we are going for, we want to be at this level. So not just you know click and so in, in our labs you will see, we don't have click and run labs, right? I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to have you actually write code and experiment and you know tweak the algorithms, because you know click and run you don't need to be in a class, right? So. All right, guys. So all right, machine learning engine. That's that's the idea. So here's the idea. So today, um, so again, you know, remember this, this is kind of a, you know, two days, remember this is a two full day, right? Because a lot of the training we do is like, you know, full day trainings. So kind of break this into, you know, divide this into four days and that's how this will spread out. So today I'm going to look at ML intro. We're going to look at a lot of the machine learning concepts, algorithm, things like that. And next week, starting forward, we're going to sort of, you know, looking into, go into more machine learning concepts. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. So, when we wrote this course, uh, we also wanted to make sure we use real world data sets. Um, and a lot of the machine learning, I'm sure like, you know, a lot of people probably watched you know, uh, videos and you know, uh, uh, meetups. A lot of the time people just use synthetic data and that's fine, you know, that's fine to understand the concept, but it doesn't really prepare you for like real world data. Because real world data tend to be messy, it's unbalanced, right? There's a lot of cleanup you have to do before you can even run machine learning. So we actually want you to be exposed to real world data. So you know, these are some of the you know, data you will see, like you, know, you will see like data from Uber, data from Walmart, uh, data from Prosper, right? So these are, I mean, these are all public data sets, nothing proprietary, right? they're all published. But we will actually want to show you guys how to work with the data set, right? Because the goal is, I mean, when, you, when, you, when you teach a class at Walmart, for example, right? When the, when the team goes through our training, after the training, they actually go and actually implement algorithms that go in production, right? So if you cannot just teach them toy, like toy data, we actually have, you know, teach which like real world data. So it's the same kind of, you know, labs, you know, you will have access to uh, next week. Yeah, so, good. And um, <laughs> so I don't know if you any Simpsons fans here. I, I just put this up, right? Because um, like I said, you know, you know I, I can show you guys all the slides I want, you know, here, but unless you start practicing, right? And that's the, that's the best way to learn machine learning. Practice, 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 right? And that's why we give you the labs. Uh, I want you to set up your own lab environment, right? So uh, again, so the lab, this class is going to focus on concepts and fundamentals. And this may seem like a kind of a reverse because a lot of people start with the APIs. But like I said, in machine learning, what's important is the concepts. Once you understand concepts, APIs are very easy. Right? And, I, and I'll show you when I do the labs, you know, APIs, you know, you can just go to a, you know, documentation, copy paste, that's the API. What's important is understanding what's going on, right? What is the algorithm doing? How do I know this algorithm is correct? All that, right? And that's what we're going to cover in this class. And I want this class to be highly interactive. Please ask question anytime, right? So the best best thing is, um, you know, just put the chat window so we'll uh, keep the class going, and I will check the chat window periodically 
and I'll answer the questions, right? Um, yeah, so we are basically doing um, scikit-learn, right? That, that's our Python basic library. Uh, and I'll talk about why we're using scikit-learn. Uh, that's what we are gonna be using in our, in, our, in our labs, right? And like I said, um, once you get into the lab, we have tons and tons of labs built in. Uh, because one of, the, one of the things, you know, I get uh, either, you know, when you do our enterprise classes or public classes is, we have people who said, oh, you know, I watch some Coursera videos, I watch some videos on YouTube, I read a book, but I really haven't done much um, hands-on. And here's your chance, right? Because, you know, like I said, machine, best way of learning machine learning is doing hands-on, right? So we have plenty of labs for you guys, uh, right? Uh, the labs will start, start simple, but, you know, we will kind of show you guys how to, you know, adapt the labs to like real-world data as well, right? So. Cool. So again, the idea is after the end, of the end of the thing, you should be fairly comfortable in machine learning. Uh, we are going to cover all the popular algorithms, right? Um, and uh, so um, that's the important part because then you sort of know what the algorithm to use to solve your problem, right? So, all right, guys. So we talked about introductions. Like I said, you guys, you know, I gave you guys an introduction. I will skip uh, the introduction for us because we are just too many of us. Uh, but thanks for filling out the survey. So I know, and I have a pretty good idea of um, your background. All right, guys. So this is it. So basically, we have uh, you have my contact. It's all in the document, right? Uh, right here. You can shoot me an email, find me on LinkedIn. And uh, the slides I emailed to you guys, uh, labs, I'm gonna upload the labs in a second. And also, you know, you have the, the work environment. Either you can do it on your laptop or you can do it in Google Cloud. Okay, sure. All right. Uh, da, da, da. All right, I guess, so that's it. So let's get started here. So let me go through uh, the next slide, which is uh, slide number three, uh, ML resources. So this is a quick handout. Uh, we put with some of the resources that, you know, um, that'll be useful to you guys. All right, so slide number three, if you look at this, all right. Um, these have links and books. So some of the machine learning uh, resources that are online and that are very, very good quality. All right, so Python, right, machine learning, some of the meta links, like for example, also machine learning has a lot of links, right? And we also curated some of the links uh, for you guys to kind of get going. So think of them like a reading material, right? So uh, there are, um, these are really good books. One of the things I would recommend, um, this is worth checking at your work, if you guys have access to um, the Safari online, you know, the o it's called O'Reilly Learning right now. Um, I think they're called O'Reilly Learning. Um, so maybe it's worth checking if you have access, um, right? So um, <clears throat> what the O'Reilly Learning is like, you know, they are like a lot of books, all the O'Reilly books online, and they even have video, videos lectures. So a lot of the companies will give you access to by employees, uh, right? So it's worth checking if you access to Safari online. It's used to be called Safari online. Um, but now they are called O'Reilly Learning, All right? Uh, very well worth it. It's like forty bucks per year or something, um, and you know that's that's my. You know, I, I, we actually have a subscription for our company. Um, money well spent, right? Uh, and also some of the libraries actually give you free subscription. So if you're a member of like a, I know like a Sunnyvale Public Library, you serve an agreement. So if you have a Sunnyvale Library card, you can actually get access to uh, O'Reilly Learning, right? So might worth checking out. Anyway, so there's some of the resources you know, I, I gave it to you guys. Um, uh, really, um, really good resources to kind of you know, learn machine learning, right? So that's slide number three, guys. Okay. All right. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at um, slide number four, uh, ML Prima. Right? So since most of you are very new to machine learning, we're gonna talk about machine learning, uh, what it is, you know, what are the problems it can solve, uh, so a bit of a theory, um, so I, but I, I, you know, um, I will show you guys some of the videos uh, and then I will keep it entertaining, right? So I think this is what we will cover uh, for the rest of the today, right? Slide number four, it, it is pretty extensive. I'm not gonna go through each single slide. Uh, I'm gonna highlight some of the important slides for us. Yeah, okay. So slide number four, guys, I think you guys should, should already have the slides. 
right? So this one we are going to talk about, like I said, use cases, you know, what are the vocabularies and what are some of the algorithms people use. All right. So let's do a little bit of a history, right? So I always ask the audience, um, think of something maybe you guys did today or this week that you think is powered by machine learning or AI. Can you just type a few things in the chat window for everyone to see? Right. What are some of the things you guys kind of, you know, think that is, you know, powered by machine learning? Yep, yep, Google search, absolutely. So Google search, definitely. What else, guys? What else, you know, we do on a day-to-day? -day? Netflix, absolutely, yeah, Netflix. Um, your Facebook feed, yep, online shopping, Exactly, like, like for example, when you, so when you say online shopping, like recommendations, like for example, right? When you buy stuff, you know how they recommend things. Yep. Uh, with the ads, uh, you know, when you say in Facebook or, you know, you know, even when you do Google search, ads are basically driven by machine learning now. Yep, yep. Very cool. Um, anyone uses um, Alexa or Siri, any of these guys, right? Google Home. Uh, they're all AI too, right? Um, and, uh, Self-driving cars, right? If anyone has, you know, has, you know, has like a Tesla or something, right? AI. So when I say AI, right? I mean, so these are actually, you know, we use them in a real world life automatically. I mean, right now, right? I mean, it's not like, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, so it's already here. So this is gonna show you some of the algorithms that are being used uh, in our day-to-day -day life, right? So exactly, very good guys, yeah. Pretty good suggestion, thank you everybody. Yep, so this is good. I always ask audience and, you know, and once you start thinking, you'll realize, oh, wow, you know, AI is here, yeah. So this is, you know, I mean, if you just use the Google, new Google uh, Gmail, right? Uh, you know how they sort of auto-complete the sentences now, right? Not just words, but sentences, right? So, which is pretty cool. And, you know, especially AI. <laughs> so let me see if I can do this. Um, I wanna play a quick video and let me see if you guys can see the video here. Um, one second. Um, screen share setting. All right, let me try this here. So I'm gonna play this video guys. So let me know if you can hear the audio and the sound. Uh, this is a nice intro video from Google. Gives you a pretty good overview um, of, the, um, of the video. I'll, so again, the link's actually here. I'll also put the link here as well, right? Just so you know, I mean, if, the, if the Zoom thing is not working, you can actually watch it on here, all right? Um, I'll just put links here. So you can actually watch it on your own. Okay. All right, so let me see if we can play the video. Hey, Suji, no, no audio at the moment. Ah, okay. All right, let me see what I can do here. Give me one second. All right, guys, so we haven't told the audio, so that's fine. So let's do this. Um, I'm gonna have you guys go through this video real quick and I will kind of explain um, what the video talks about, right? So let's kind of look at the video, guys. So maybe you can sort of watch it on your own. So here's a link. Thank you, yep. Um, and so you see the Zoom window. Uh, so that's a link. So please, you know, spend like next couple of minutes and I will explain what this video says, right? So. 
All right, so YouTube video link is right here, guys. Here you go. And also, it's also in the, um, the document, right? So I'm sort of putting everything in the document as well. So the same document, scroll all the way down. Links, right? So right here. And let me see if I can, uh, while you guys are watching this, let me see if I can bring up my Mac and then um, maybe I'll run it from there, okay? So, all right, so watch the video, please.
All right, guys, so very good. Looks like most of you are done. So I'll kind of point out some of the technology, some of the terminologies, right? Just so we are aware of this. Um, right. So talk about you know, why machine learning is important. The reason is, right, because we are get, getting so much data. Uh, you know, we all, we all, we all engineers, you know, we, all, we, we write systems. Um, right? We probably have written rules, like if this happens, do this. If that happens, do this. But that kind of programming is no longer viable because we have so much data, writing rules manually is, um, is no longer viable. And this is where really AI really shines because AI is just computers, right? So they can go through huge amounts of data and they can write, come up with the rules. So that's basically what machine learning is, right? learning from data and coming up with rules. Like, so what are the rules? For example, things like, you know, um, a Google spam filter might go through, I don't know, like billions of emails every day and then come up with rules to say, which is spam, which is not, right? Can you imagine a human doing this, right? It's almost impossible, right? Because the amount of volume, do, you know, uh, the, you just can't adapt the rules fast enough. So, so that's why AI has become very important. Um, so, you know, this kind of talks about some of the applications, right? Some of the AI, like for example, you know, you know when, you, when somebody uploads a picture on Facebook, sure, um, right? They, you know, you, you, they tag you automatically. How do they do that? By doing face recognition, right? Um, and you talked about Google search. So things like, you know, when you talk about, when you do like Java, what do you really mean, right? Do you mean like coffee? Or do you mean like the programming language, right? So these are the things an AI algorithm will figure out. You know, so based on your past history, they might figure out, oh yeah, you know, um, you know, Suji is a Java programmer. So when I say Java, I mean Java the language, right? Maybe Thomas, you know, he likes coffee. So when he says Java, he means, you know, Java the coffee drink, right? So even determining which that is, um, is very important, right? So, so some of the things, you know, application like things like self-driving cars we talked about, right? But let's talk about, you know, where things are going. Right, um, machine learning, as you know, is not a product, and this is a misconception I, I hear from a lot of people. People think machine learning is a product. It's not. It's more of an enabler. Right. So we are using products that are actually powered by AI or machine learning. So you guys talked about Netflix recommendation, uh, Amazon recommendation, right? That's a tangible thing we see. It's actually powered by machine learning behind the scenes. So that's why we have to understand machine learning. It's basically a technology that's allowing us to build some really cool um, applications and um, uh, systems that are never possible before. And you know, this being Google, you know, obviously they are, you know, they are pushing TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is a, a framework for doing machine learning. And we'll talk about this a little later, right? So, so this is pretty cool. I really, I really understand that, you know, this is a very succinct way of doing machine learning. So what is machine learning? Basically, we are using data to answer questions. What does it really mean, right? So let's kind of expose this a little bit, and that's why I want to show you see the video. Using data, basically, is mini training. So what I'm meaning, like, so you have some data already, and we are we are basically pushing the data to an algorithm, and the computer algorithm is learning from this data, and that part is called training. So maybe let's say, you know, you have some you have some email that are already sorted at spam and not spam, and you are going to bring a new algorithm online. So how do you train the algorithm? You show the algorithm the pre-sorted data, say, hey, this is spam, this is not spam, and that part is called training, right? And the training once once you're done the training, right, what you end up getting is a model. Then the model can answer questions. Like for example, you know, you can show them, let's say you're building a spam model and the model's ready. And then you can show them and say, okay, hey, here's a new email. What do you think? Is it spam or not, right? So uh, I don't say like in some companies you might probably see things like, you know, they will not say this is spam. They will say tag it as something like possibly spam. The reason is they cannot determine for sure this is spam. But they might think maybe they'll say there's like there's like 55% chance this might be spam, right? So rather than sending it to spam folder, they might still keep an inbox, but they're gonna tag it as you know possible spam. Right? 
Yeah, so this is what the model does, right? So when the model look at the look at a new email, it will determine is it spam or not, right? There you go, right? So, and the model will actually answer the question. So they're gonna make sense. So kind of, if you look at the workflow, I'm starting with the data, I'm doing the training, right? That gives me a model. And the model is the one that's answering the questions. So, and then, and we, we look at all these ter terminals a little deeper, but I, I just wanna give you guys a, little, a very high level view of what, this, what it means to do machine learning, right? So, so that gonna make sense guys, all right? Um, any question on this video? So uh, I, I really like this one because this gives you a pretty good view of machine learning um, from, uh, from Google. Sorry, I guess having trouble with the audio. Yeah, audio is good, Suji. All right, thank you, thank you guys, yep. Um, all right. So this is something I always um, show to people and say AI is a pretty exciting technology, right? Uh, you guys probably heard of this um, graph called hype cycle, right? So when a new technology comes online, right? There's a huge hype, right? There's a lot of money being thrown at it. Uh, there's a lot of startups come, on, come online. And then after a while people realize, oh wait, this is just all hype. And you know, interest kind of deflates, right? And things kind of go, you know, go back to kind of, you know, where it was. And then if the technology really has legs, then you know, it actually starts finding you know, actual use cases people care about, and then kind of you know, start using it, All right? So this basically is called hype cycle. Now question for you guys is, where do you think AI is in the cycle? Can you just maybe go on record by typing in the chat window? <laughs> Which phase do you guys think AI is at right now? Yeah, peak, maybe here, yeah, 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 troll, <laughs> that's right, yeah, okay. Again, now there's no right or wrong answer, right? <laughs> so interesting, yeah, a lot of you guys think, you know, we are kind of right here, okay, okay, like I said, there's no right or wrong answer, right? Maybe, right, maybe we are here, right? Maybe we are here, maybe we are here. So yeah, you guys think maybe we are kind of in a slope of enlightenment maybe, yeah, possibly. Yeah. And here's the thing guys, right? nobody knows. Right? I mean, if I knew, right, I'd be a very, very rich man. <laughs> so, nobody knows, right? And that, this is the thing about, you know, uh, being in a bubble, when you're in a bubble, nobody knows you're in a bubble. So yeah, so and, uh, I like something like maybe on the, depending on the industry, some industries are early adapters, right? Um, so, you know, maybe they kind of, you know, figured out. Like for example, Netflix and you know, my Facebook and all these guys, they kind of, you know, they do recommendation and that's part of their core business. So maybe, you know, they are maybe in the productive cycle, right? Maybe somebody, some other, other vertical, maybe they're just, you know, getting jazzed about AI and say, oh yeah, we are, AI is gonna change everything. Maybe, maybe not, right? Yeah, so, so I, think, I think that's a good way to look at it. Based on the industry, some industries are very mature and they know what they're doing. Some industries are just kind of, you know, getting caught in the hype. So, good, very good. Good answers and good discussions. Thank you guys. All right, so here's machine learning, right? So we talk about machine learning, you know, we, we need to define machine learning first. This is one of the really nice ones, something one I've seen. Machine learning is basically computers learning to do things, right? Without being explicitly programmed. Think about this for a second. I mean, most of us are programming background, right? When you write code, what are we writing? We are writing instruction for the computer whether the code could be Java, Python, SQL, doesn't matter, right? We actually, I mean, I'm writing instructions so the computer's gonna follow. But how can a computer learn to do things without even, you know, you know, being, you know, being taught to how to do, right? So think about something like a self-driving car, for example, right? So if I ask you to go and write a program to do self-driving car, you could actually go and write a massive program, right? You know, so can I handle all the situation on the road? 
Like if this happens, do this. If this happens, do this, right? And this is what the early approaches were and they were not very successful because the number of cases are just so numerous for us to really do the successful. Now think about this way. Imagine you're driving a car around, but there's a computer in the car that is recording like what's, you know, scenery outside. And also it's recording, you know, it has sensors, it's recording sort of the driver's reaction. So let's say you're driving the car and the computer detects, you know, oh, there's a stop sign you know, right in front of the car, right? Now the driver is stepping on the brake. Uh, there's a pedestrian crossing, the driver's slowing down. Uh, I'm merging on the freeway, driver is speeding up. So okay, if you sort of imagine, if you drive with this computer learning in your car long enough, maybe the computer can figure out how to drive. Right? Because why? Because it's observing what's outside the car and also it's observing what the driver is doing. And this is, you know, in, in a sort of very simplistic sense, right? A lot of the self-driving cars basically employ this practice. Right? Because, you know, you drive Tesla, right? I mean, so, you know, uh, uh, sometimes they will record your video, right? So if they have the autopilot, and for some reason you disengage the autopilot, you know, they will record and you know, send the video to Tesla. So the Tesla engineers can learn from it. Why, you know, why did you take off the autopilot? Maybe, you know, uh, there's a corner case they didn't consider, right? So that's all right. So the, the Tesla autopilot is getting better, not just by from your driving, but everybody's driving, right? So, you know, whenever, you know, these videos get sent to Tesla, the next, next, next version, next model is going to include those use cases those corner cases. So next time you get an update, not only you benefit from your driving, you are benefiting from everybody else's driving, right? Collective knowledge. So that's why AI is you know, really accelerating because the learning is really, really fast. And once it's learned, you know, your knowledge will keep compounding, right? It just keeps learning more and more. So, so that's why AI is very exciting because once you teach it, you know, sort of never, it never forgets, right? So. So let me show you, and we talk about spam a little bit. So let's you know, give you a, a concrete example. And I used to work for a company who did spam filtering. And this is maybe 10 years ago. So we would have rules like this, right? We look at the email and say, okay, if the email came from this IP address, maybe, you know, maybe this IP address is like a blacklist IP address, we'll say this is spam. If the email came from like a company IP address, we'll say, hmm, maybe not spam. And the email has, you know, our spammy words like free loans and cheap degrees and cheap medicines, right? We'll say definitely spam. So these are rules, right? I'm writing if, else, if, else, right? This is like our, you know, I'm writing code. And we would have thousands of rules to score spams. Even with those, our accuracy was maybe about 70%, right? Because spammers always find new loopholes and new ways of kind of you know, defeating our system, right? So this is the old way of doing things, you know, writing rules manually Right, to score an email spam or not. We don't do this anymore. Now the, now the approach is like this. So the machine learning approach is like this. We have an ML algorithm, we take a machine learning algorithm, we show the algorithm a bunch of spam emails. And we say these are all spam. Also we show the algorithm a bunch of good emails. We say these are non-spams. Now the algorithm is automatically learning what makes a spam and what makes a good email. And this is the key here, right? I'm not telling the algorithm what to look for. It's learning automatically. So I'm not writing any code. I'm, sorry, I'm not writing any code like, you know, if this, do this. I'm, all, I'm only doing simply say, hey, you know, these are a bunch of spam emails, go learn from them. You know, here's another bunch of spam emails, go learn from them, that's it. So as you can imagine, the algorithm kind of keeps learning, the directs patterns, and the one the algorithm learned enough, you can actually, once the algorithm learned enough, you can give it a new email and say, okay, what do you think? Spam or not? Then the algorithm will predict. So is that gonna make sense, guys? You know, I mean, and this is this is why you know AI is changing software development, because you know, a um, lot of the things we write code like this right now, in maybe five, you know, ten years. AI will be writing, you know, writing these for us, these rules, right? So what you're doing is we're teaching the algorithm. So the algorithm trains from the data, and then you can basically write the rules so there's no human in the loop, right? 
And as you can imagine, right, AI can learn very, very fast, right? You know, right? Because, you know, humans, we only have so much, we, you know, we, we can absorb and write. But in AI, just feed more and more data, it'll learn more and more. And this is why I always encourage software engineers to learn AI, right? Because, you know, um, a lot of the things we do as a software engineers today is going to be done by AI in the next few years. So I always look at this as like a little race, right? So you had to kind of, you know, stay ahead of this, right? So in the pretty soon, what you're going to find is you're going to write, you know, instead of writing code, we are going to be training algorithms. And we are almost sort of, you know, heading there, you know, in, in some domains, right? So that's why uh, machine learning is a very important skill for uh, uh, software engineers. I'll kind of pause here for a second. Any questions on this one, guys? Um, Yes, uh, this is supervised learning, and we will talk about this. Yeah, you're right. This is basically anytime I'm, I mean, so this process, the, you know, the, I'm showing the data to the algorithm, but the algorithm is learning. Technical term for this is called training, right? Because an algorithm is training on the data. So imagine you're going to like a, like a swim school, you know what I mean? Where, you know, you are, you are going through training, right? So this whole process is called training. So the more you train, as you can imagine, the better the algorithm can get. So what is more here? More basically means more data. The reason uh, Google's spam filter is so good, you can guess, right? Because you know, the algorithm trains on massive amount of data every day. And when you guess, you know, let's say sometime, you know, I hardly get spam emails on my inbox anymore because from Google. But even when I, even when I do like once in a while, and I'll get like maybe you know one or two, once or twice a month. And when I go and mark the email as spam, what am I doing? I'm really adding to this collection of data. And you can imagine like, you know, other, you know, other millions of users using Gmail also marking emails as spam and not spam. So again, collective knowledge, right? That's an important you know, thing of AI. So it's learning not just from my feedback, it's learning from everybody's feedback. So the collective knowledge is what makes Gmail, Maps, and all these things very, very powerful because the amount of data they train on is massive. I guess so hopefully, I, you know, so now I think you know, we understand why AI is you know, very important for software engineers, right? Because this is, the, this is the future. All right, I can guess any questions, please you know, type them in as we go along, right? So now you might say, wait a second, why is it different from a rule-based engine? How is AI can be different from a rule-based engine? So here's, here's, a, here's an approach, right? Let me show you guys this, right? Let's say I'm, I'm a bank, I'm apply, you know, I have an online application so people can apply for a credit card. So let's say an, you know, an, um, an application comes in, let's say there's a rule-based engine for you know, early on, right? The rule-based engine is something like, you know, if my credit score is this, if my income is this, you can approve or deny, right? Or if it's gonna borderline, it'll flag the application and you know, somebody else can review the application. So a human made a review the application and they may make the final decision, like I approve or deny. And this is what traditionally things have been done. But when I plug in an AI algorithm, right, or a machine learning algorithm, what's happening is it's, same, it's doing the same thing, right? It's sort of evaluating the algorithm, I'm sorry, application, and quickly approving or denying. If it's borderline, it'll flag it. Then a human will actually, you know, review this and make the final decision. The difference here is this final decision is then fed back to the algorithm. So algorithm has one more data point. So next time a similar application comes along, remember the first application it did, it couldn't really you know, make a decision, right? So that's why it's flagged. But now it learned, it says, oh, huh, if an application comes like this, I know what the final decision is. Let's say it was approved, right? So from that point on, algorithm learned, if you see a similar application in the future, I'm not gonna flag it, I'm just gonna approve it, right? Because why? Now I learned. So as you can imagine, AI algorithm keeps learning. I have the feedback. So this is called feedback loop. As we provide feedback loop, algorithm keeps learning and it gets better and better every day. And this is how it based from a rule-based engine because rule, rules, rule-based engines, they don't adapt. If you want to change the rules, you have to basically go and change the rules manually, right? Somebody has to go and actually change the rules. But AI algorithms, once you establish the feedback loop, they can learn. And as you can imagine, so the first, you know, first day you deploy the AI algorithm, maybe you know, it'll get a lot of flags. As the days come along, right, it kind of keeps learning, learning, and the, then it can make decisions by itself. 
So the number of flagged application is going to go down eventually. Why? It keeps learning. All right, so hopefully this made it, you know, so now we understand why AI is different from rule-based systems. That's right, yeah, so yeah, so Adi, you had a good, good point. So when you do this feedback, uh, you are kind of curating the data and the results, right? So yeah, so yeah, and so there's still a human in the loop. So when you do supervised algorithms, uh, there is still a human in the loop, basically tweaking and uh, curating the results. Yeah, yeah, and we'll talk about this a little, little more, more detail, yeah. No, no, reinforcement learning is a, it's a different way of doing this. This is supervised learning, right? You're actually giving, uh, you actually, giving data points for the algorithms, right? So, all right, so use cases. I'm there, and, you know, and this way I asked you guys early in, this, uh, in the series, I mean, there are too many, right? I mean, pretty much, you know, you can pick a, any domain, say healthcare or finance, AI is being used, right? So, um, so very quickly, I want to, you know, run through some of the very quick history of the AI, right? I mean, I'm gonna spend too much time on this one. So the AI is not a new concept. You know, people have been trying to do AI for, you know, as long as computers were around, right? Uh, initial thing of AI was, you gotta write a massive program that has all the rules of the world encoded so the computer's smart. Because, you know, the thinking is, you know, computers learn from, you know, follow the rules. So if you have a program that has all the rules of the world, computers will be, you know, able to smart, right? They will, they will be able to solve real world problems. But this approach basically, you know, was very limited uh, because as it turns out, Encoding real world programs, um, you know, rules in the real world to solve real world problems will be very difficult. But in some specific domains, like for example, playing chess, this is successful, right? Because you know, you know playing chess is very limited. It has very um, limited, you know, limited moves, very well defined rules. So you can write a program to try all the different, um, uh, different uh, moves and then pick the best move. So in this case, the top down approach was successful. But things like, you know, imagine I, I, do, I do like a cat versus dog. I'm showing a picture and I say, is it a cat or is it a dog? Huh? This approach is not gonna work. Because, you know, I mean, if you ask you to write code to say, you know, distinguish cat versus dog, how, where would you even begin? You know what I mean? It's very hard to do, as it turns out. Then, another approach came out, and this is kind of the same time, you know, data was, we are getting more and more data. It's called bottom-up learning. So imagine how, you know, kids learn to talk, right? Kids don't know grammar. They don't, you know, they don't, they don't memorize dictionaries, right? They basically pick up speech from, you know, parents, friends, and teachers. So they are learning by example. So thinking is, why don't we let computers do the same thing, right? We show that computers enough examples, maybe they will pick up some patterns, right? So now the shift is no longer logic, it's data. So the more data you show to the algorithms, they can pick up patterns and they can learn things. So a lot of the success stories we are hearing now, things like image recognition, language translation, all these are basically what we call bottom-up learning. Right? Meaning learning from data, not writing rules, okay? So let me show you like, a, you know, uh, let me show you a couple of examples. Like, you know, so this is like a translation approach, right? So Google Translate, um, they use the rule-based system early on, but now they have a they ch ch change to an AI-based system. You can sort of look, look at the, you know, read the case study here. It's basically, you know, just an example they showed is like, you know, how accurate the AI-based system is, you can see, right? This is like translating from uh, this language. The old one basically translates word by word, so it kind of misses the context. But the new system, it translates accurately. It's basically, you know, basically the code reads, you know, you are not what you write, you're what you read, right? So you can look at okay, the old and the new. The new one actually gets it right, it gets a context. Because AI, right? Because they're learning on so much, you know, so much data, you can sort of figure out what it means. So, so this is another success story, uh, you know, of you know, um, learning from massive amount of data. Okay. Another success story in the last five years, I would say, image recognition. Right. There's been a huge revolution in image recognition. Right. So, like for example, you know, and this is what kind of you know, enabling self-driving cars and all the you know all the rest. Right. When you show a photo to a computer, can you tell what what is this photo? And is it a cat? Is it a dog? Is it a house? Right. Again, we made tremendous progress in the last few years in this domain. Okay. So one of the competition in the Kegel competition, right? So they basically gave 25,000 images for your algorithm to train on. And they tested your algorithm on 15,000 separate images. And as you can see, the winning algorithm 
is 99% accurate. That is unheard of, like you know, 10 years ago, I mean, an image recognition algorithm in a scoring 99%, just unheard of. Why? Because the algorithm has improved so much in the last few years. All right, so what, what happened? Because, so I'll, I'll go skip some of these, some of the, you know, uh, uh, some of these uh, slides, but in the 80s and 90s, we didn't really make good progress because, right, it was oversold basically, and we didn't really solve in real world problems. So like I said, you know, you just, you know, AI was basically solving toy problems. The issue was basically, we just didn't have enough data for the compute power. And that changed in the last 10 years, right? So what happened was, uh, in 2012, there was a competition called ImageNet competition. It's basically, you know, um, algorithms are designed to, um, they are shown a bunch of images and they're supposed to recognize what the image is. You know, is it a house, is it a car, is it a boat, things like this. And one algorithm really beat everybody else. This basically, it's basically beat everybody by at least 10 points. And I was like, wow, what's going on? You know, how come this is, you know, this algorithm is so good? And this algorithm is designed using what we call now know for neural networks. A very different mechanism, right? To do AI. And that basically, you know, so this is, you know, right, this is just, you know, barely, you know, um, not even 10 years ago, right? And this kind of hit off like a, the current AI boom. Everyone's like, oh, wait a second, now we can solve really difficult problems, right? So at the same time, um, 2012, 13, um, Google was saying experimenting and they had they built this massive cluster and they, they, they showed this network, neural network, bunch of YouTube videos. And they just showed, fed YouTube videos in a neural network. And eventually the network was able to recognize a shape and then says, in a lot of the videos, I see something like this. And then as we know in YouTube, what's the most common shape? Cats, right? So the beauty of this algorithm is, you know, nobody told it what the cat should look like. The algorithm kind of learned by watching videos and then they, ha ha, I'm sort of seeing this shape over and over again. So I don't know what this is. You know, nobody told, the, told it's a cat, but it says, yeah, I'm seeing this shape and I, I can recognize this shape in the videos, right? So again, how is it possible? Because, you know, they had a massive cluster of computer watching YouTube video frame after frame, trying to extract the patterns. Right? So these are some of the things that are kind of happened in the last 10 years that really kind of, you know, kick off the AI research, right? So we talked about this, right? So what changed? What caused all these things to kind of come on? A few things. First of all, now we have big data. You remember, AI is all about data, right? So now we have so much data. You know, imagine your iPhones, your Fitbits, your cars, right? Everything is pushing data. So now you have so much data to train our algorithms. Not only we have big data, we have big data ecosystem. For example, you know, uh, things like Hadoop, Spark, they didn't exist 10 years ago. Now these things actually, they can handle massive amount of data. And not only we have big data, we actually have tools that can do big data um, um, for us. Cloud platforms, they're called compute, right? So they basically democratized uh, the computation. So what it means, means is, uh, in the early days, you had, you know, if you need massive amount of data, number crunching, you had to go and build your own cluster. But now you can just go to any cloud vendor, just swipe your credit card, and be up and running in minutes, right? So I'm just gonna give you an understanding, right? So this, in Amazon, you can sort of, you know, buy, rent this machine for one hour for, for a dollar. I mean, I was probably even cheaper, right? This is the guy, I wrote this like a couple of years ago. So let's say you're renting 100 machines, and you're training your algorithm for five hours. It basically, you know, your cost like 500 bucks, that's it. Right. Much more affordable than the old days where you actually go and build your own machine, your own network and everything. Right. And also, hardware has improved quite a bit. Algorithms have improved quite a bit, right? And people are releasing uh, models as open source as well. And all of these things kind of are pushing AI um, to be, you know, to, to you know, what we see right now. So let me talk about hardware advances real quick. Uh, this is CPU versus GPU. A lot of the times when you think about a, you know, AI uh, processing, you know, you'll, you'll think like CPU, like Intel, right? But a lot of the AI work right now is being done in GPUs. What is a GPU? It's a graphics, graphics card. Like if you, if you like a, have an Xbox or game computer, you know, there's a GPU, a graphics card sitting in there that's drawing the pixels 
on the screen. And these guys are very good at very fast compute. So that's why a lot of the, in a lot of the hardcore AI is now done on GPU because they give us so much compute power. Then here's where, right? Like just to give you an illustration, like here's like an Intel CPU, right? Let's say it has like what, eight cores. Very typical, right? So you have a server, eight cores, eight core CPU. But you can take a GPU system, since the GPU size, the core size is pretty small in silicon, they can cram thousands of cores per chip. So the latest NVIDIA chip has, I think, 5,000 cores. Can you imagine, like, you know, I mean, five, if you have a 5,000 core chip, how much compute can you do, right? And, and all of these cores can crunch numbers in parallel. And that's what makes GPUs as a perfect platform for running machine learning algorithms because, you know, I mean, machine learning is basically number crunching. And these GPUs are really good at number crunching. Right? So, so a lot of, you know, a lot of the, that's why in a lot of the cutting edge algorithm you'll see are being used by GPUs. Yeah. Now, you know, Intel at the same time, you know, they don't want to be left behind, right? So they actually, you know, updating their CPU lineup as well. So as you can see that their latest CPU lineup, you can see they're actually embedding math instructions or AI, you know, AI advanced math instruction in the silicon. So when you run an AI algorithm, your code runs much, much faster. So it's saying, you know, as fast as 25 times. Right? Because you know, I mean, everyone recognizes that this is the future, right? AI workloads are the future. Google, on the other hand, you know, they actually built their own chip. It's called TPU. Right? So what is the TPU? TPU is basically a custom-built AI chip, right? For AI workloads, very specifically designed. Okay? So it's much faster than both CPU and GPU. It's, you know, right? Remember, these are general-purpose um, platforms, but TPU is a very targeted design. And again, uh, so like, like a lot of things, like you, know, you can sort of read more about here. So for example, you know, um, Google Photos. If you upload photos into Google Photos, your photos are being processed by a TPU, right? So you can sort of see you know, how fast these guys, like a single TPU can process 100 million photos a day. And when you see this Google car, you know, driving around taking, you know, like street view, right? All those are processed by TPUs. Remember, it's a very custom built chip for AI workloads. So because um, you know, use Google Cloud, you can actually rent these, um, rent machines that has TPU support. Um, as a matter of fact, remember the Google Colab I talked about earlier? You, are, you can actually run your program on TPU as well. They have free TPU access on Colab, right? So pretty cool. Anyway, again, all of these are basically what? Because you know, the need for more, more horsepower, right? So you know, like I said, you can see, see the algorithm, right? We need more and more um, uh, horsepower to, for our advanced algorithm. So now the race is on, right? Everybody's kind of building their own chip. Google, Amazon, um, Facebook, I'm sure Apple is doing it too. Tesla is doing their own chip, right? So everyone's kind of racing to build their own AI chips because, right? These are, and everyone wants to, you know, want to be their, their advantage. So, so all of these things are going on, right? Hardware is advancing at a very, very rapid pace. And also, you know, research, there's a lot of research going on, you know, the AI is a huge hype these days. So, you know, a lot of money chasing AI and a lot of research, a lot of startups, all that, all that's happening, right? So, <clears throat> also, what happened in the, in the last few years, I would say is the machine learning libraries have become so much better. I remember, you know, uh, doing machine learning in college, and this is, you know, so many years ago, like there were not a, no good libraries. So you had to kind of start everything from scratch. You know, you write even like the basic code, like gradient descent from scratch, but now, the libraries are so much better. You can actually, you know, um, write a pretty advanced program, just maybe like a 10, 20 lines of code. And that's only possible in the last few years because, you know, um, the libraries have really matured quite a bit. And another thing that really happened was uh, people sort of releasing models as open source. This is kind of neat because um, this is kind of doing the same effect Linux and open source had in sort of software. Right? I mean, imagine if we sort of, you know, follow the Linux path. When Linux came out, it became open source. So suddenly you had this huge ecosystem of all this really high quality code you can just start using, right? You don't have to go and write your own web service. Uh, you can just write, write, you know, use Apache, right? You don't have to go write your own database. You can use MySQL. So then what you can do is you can actually build on that, right? So now that's happening quite a bit. 
for example. I just give an example here. Uh, imagine I'm actually doing a, um, uh, uh, somebody asked me right an algorithm to, you know, to separate uh, identify gender, male versus female, by looking at the photos. But the first thing you have to do is like, you know, when I do image recognition, I need to actually extract humans first. But this is already done for us. Now there are, there are, there are models available that when I show them a photo, they can categorize what kind of photo this is. Is it a car, is it a cat, is it a, you know, is it a human? So use that model first to extract all the humans out. Then we write our own model and that can basically further identify whether this is a male or female. In the old days, I had to kind of start from scratch. I had to basically start from here, write an algorithm to kind of, you know, do, you know, um, identify humans first and then segment the humans into, you know, male, female. But now I can just concentrate on, you know, what I need, which is, you know, identifying gender. See what I'm saying, right? Because these high quality models that do all this, they're all free now, they're all open source. Uh, Companies like Facebook, Google, and all these guys, they spend years tweaking the model and they're releasing them as open source. So everybody else can build on this. So that's what's gonna happen right now. So it's really accelerating AI because the cost of the barrier of entry has come down quite a bit. So anyway, so these are all the things kind of going on at the, at the, at the same time. And by the way, these are called model zoos. And so like, like for example, you know, if you go to TensorFlow model zoo, you will see all the models that are available. Uh, people have released as open source and in TensorFlow, uh, in t for TensorFlow, right? And you know, there are you know, some good models and you know, some really amateur models. You know, so you can sort of pick and choose based on you know, whether you want to do like image recognition or whether you want to maybe you want to do like, you know, things like a language translation that are models for pretty much every task you can imagine. So you start with those models. So these are really called pre-trained models. Right? so you're not starting from zero, you're starting with a pre-trained model that may solve like you know, 60, 70% of your work for you already. Yeah. All right guys, so that's model source, right? So a little timeline for you guys. Um, and you know, so you know, just you know, just tell the news story. Like, these are the guys who won the Turing Award. So this Turing Award is like a big, really big deal, right? So these are the guys who actually kept the um, uh, neural network. Uh, these are like you know, Godfather neural networks, right? They did a lot of research, and a lot of the work we are doing right now is kind of builds on their work. Anyway, just some of the, some other things for you guys to kind of you know, um, look at, it, right? So, as some video demos, I'll you know, I'll show you guys some of them. I'll skip over a few, right? Um, Take a look at these videos in your own time because you know since we, we don't do the sound thing right here, I'm gonna skip these. I'm gonna zip through this one, All right? Actually, this is what I wanna show you guys. If we don't need the audio here. I'll just show you the, um, the demo, so. All right. So this is basically comparing CPU and GPU. Um, let me see here. All right, so this one says, right? Okay, so this, this is the one I wanna show you guys, right? You can see the screen, right? I mean, again, I'm not playing any sound. So this one actually comparing um, um, brain, CPU, and GPU. So the, compu the c c compute power, right? So take a look at this one. So GPU has actually learned, going through all the data, 100%. CPU sort of in a barely 10% and brain half that, <laughs> right? Just to kind of give you an idea of, you know, how much horsepower these guys pack is unbelievable, right? So these are some of the things that are really enabling really complex algorithms because, you know, we have so much compute power available at our fingertips right now. Yeah. Anyway, so what kind of, you, know, watch the, you can watch the rest of the video. I just want to show you guys this screenshot because you know, I thought this is pretty cool. Right, kind of comparing all the different 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 um, hardware platforms for AI, right? So I, I include a lot of video links for you guys because you know I want to make sure you know you guys kind of want to get a sense of the where the AI is heading. Okay. All right, let's do this here. Um, all right, we are going to be slightly over, maybe five minutes. Um, I just want to quickly run through this uh, vocabulary section real quick, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Okay. So when you talk about AI, there are very first thing we had to understand is what you call generic AI, it was a narrow AI, right? So there are a lot of the advances we are doing right now is what we call narrow AI, meaning algorithm designed to solve one specific problem. 
could be self-driving cars, could be sorting out spam, you know what I mean? So these we have made pretty good progress. But the generic AI, I mean, this is sort of, you know, you are, you are, you are, you know, you know, the one we, you know, the robot for your home that can, you know, that can do all the, all the housework, cooking and cleaning and everything. We don't have it yet, right? And because the reason is, you know, this is still, you know, I don't know, a few decades away. So we don't have to worry about terminators either. Right? So that's a, again, a few decades away. So the AI we are making progress is called narrow intelligence or ANI, right? That's a term you'll hear people using. Narrow intelligence, right? Meaning AI design for specific tasks. All right, so that's one. Next up, you will hear this term quite a bit. Machine learning, deep learning, AI, and it can be a little confusing. Even though a lot of the time we use them interchangeably, I mean, I know I was using it you know, just now, right? AI, machine learning, there's a subtle difference. Here's the difference. AI, right, is basically uh, everything making machines smarter, right? So when you're writing code, you could be writing code, you could be learning from anything, just be building smarter machines, right? And then machine learning is sort of a subset of AI. Basically, we use math and stats methods to learn from data and predict and uh, predict on um, uh, future data. So things like, you know, credit card transactions, right? Whether it's a fraud or not. Deep learning, is something very specific. Uh, this is what's getting a lot of attention these days. It's using a technology called neural networks to solve some very difficult problems. So things like, you know, um, like self-driving cars, right? Those are actually being powered by deep learning because things like image recognition, even machine learning was not able to crack that. So deep learning algorithms tend to be very complex and they can solve some very complex tasks. Things like, you know, translating languages, uh, self-driving cars. So right, all these things are now being solved by deep learning. So is that gonna make sense, guys? AI, machine, you know, AI, ML, DL, right? Uh, we can use them interchangeably, uh, but that's, you know, that's, that's a difference. Right? I wanna make sure you guys understand this. Any questions? Let me know, all right? So now we understand AI, machine learning, and deep learning. Data science, basically, you know, you have the term data science. Again, data science, basically, you know, to me, just figuring out intelligence from data. Right, so for example, let's say somebody gave you a house price data. Can you, can, you know, can you sort of figure out, you know, which houses sell most, right? What are the features people want, right? Basically making sense of the data, right? So it's called data science. <laughs> so I always like this one um, because, you know, you uh, make fun of everybody saying, you know, now we know everybody's a data scientist, right? So, um, you know, so I, I sort of like this tweet, you know, how to eat who's a data scientist, you know, basically a data analyst living in California, right? So um, anyway, <laughs> just a little humor. All right, another thing you'll hear is called neural networks. What is a neural network? And when you look at neural networks, you will hear, you know, you'll see people drawing these circles. And people are always mystified. What do the circles mean? Right? What these circles mean at the end of the day, these are basically programming function or mathematical functions. Each block, represents a math formula. You know, let's, let's say you're a Java programmer. Imagine this is like a little function, right? This function takes a bunch of inputs, right? For each, each circle is a function. It takes a bunch of inputs. And it's gonna produce a bunch of outputs, right? And this output is basically in turn sent to input to right, other functions. And they take a bunch of inputs, they produce an output. That's it, right? Nothing more, nothing less. These little circles are little functions or mathematical functions. Right now, how does this make, make sense? Like, so what I've seen here is, you know, you see a bunch of, bunch of circles connected, you know, through lines. What does it mean? So what we are doing is we are basically assembling a network from individual functions, right? So, you know, like, for example, here, you know, I have like, whatever, like seven, seven functions in this layer. You now they get, I mean, let's say I'm showing a picture of a, picture of a cat. That's the input. They're gonna process, they're gonna crunch the numbers and you know, do some work, produce some output. And the next layer is going to take that, you know, take that, take the output as the input, crunch some numbers, right, so on and so forth. So you can see the signal is kind of traveling through the network, left to right. Okay. So this we get, right? You know, I mean, I'm showing you fun input to a function, functions producing the output, just a, just a mathematical function. But what made neural networks really successful is when the data goes to the other side. Remember, the goal is I'm showing a picture. You're supposed to tell me if it's a cat or a dog. 
So let's say I show a picture of a cat first, cat one, right? Network goes through, and then at the end, I'm predicting it's a dog. So I'm wrong, right? So what the neural network does is it says, you know what? No, this is wrong because this picture is supposed to be a cat. Go back and do this again, right? So I say, no, wrong, go back and guess again. So then, then what happens, everybody can adjust a little, you know, little, little mathematical function a little bit. So everybody can adjust this, you know, little functions a little bit. Signal goes again. Then I predict dog again. You say, wrong, go back. Same thing, right? I adjust the functions again. Third try, I'm predicting cat. I say, yes, you got it, okay? So now I sold this picture. Then the next picture. So you just get the idea, right? So every time we sort of, so this is called training, right? And then I'm showing the picture to the network and then say, okay, guess, guess what this, this picture is? I'm training the network. And every picture trains, if it predicts wrong, I send it back. And then the, then the neural network kind of tweak, tweak these little, little, you know, little, little parameters, try to guess again, right? And so on and so forth. So this whole process is called training. And the neural networks, the training takes a lot of time. Because you know, as you can imagine, right? These are very complex functions. Tweaking them can be very expensive. But once you tweak them in sort of the right way, you can produce amazing results. And that's why neural networks are really, really powerful in the last you know, few years. And it, you know, it takes a lot of compute power, right? I mean, don't get me wrong, right? I mean, and that's why we are inventing GPUs and building clusters and all that. But if you manage to sort of train on a large network, build a large network and train on a, on a large set of images, you'll get amazing performance. And that, you know, that's kind of what's powering a lot of the, you know, a lot of the um, AI revolution now, right? A lot of data and a lot of compute. Yeah. So that's neural network. So now you understand, right? So when next time you see like a little circles, you know what this means. It's just, a, just a basically a programming function or a mathematical function, that's it. But the beauty is they can sort of tweak themselves Right, during training, when you're training these networks, they can tweak themselves in a meaning, you know, they can adjust the parameters to produce the right result. And if you train them enough, now the network is tweaked to, let's say, to predict cat versus dog. Right? So the more data you throw at it, the more fine tuned the algorithm gets. That's it, right? That's what a neural network is, you know, right? So, not a, not a big mystery. All right, guys, let's talk about training versus inference. So what is training? Training is what I just mentioned. Remember, you know, I'm sending a, sending a picture through the network and it was kind of in adjusting the weights and all that. This whole thing is training, right? So I can start with the data, right? So I, get a, I have data, I'm showing the data to the algorithm. Remember, and the data plus algorithm gives me model. And this whole process is called training. And this is the most computationally expensive um, operation in, in AI. Let's give an example, right? you know, just you know, take a look at this one. So the Google Translate model, right? This is an example. I mean, this is kind of, in a, you know, kind of a, on the other end of the spectrum, but it gives you an idea, right? The input data is 2 billion words, right? They train on about 100 GPUs for one week. I mean, that's kind of the training we're talking about, right? I mean, it takes enormous amount of compute power. So depending on the training, right? Depending on the data and the algorithm, of course, some trainings can take you like maybe days or weeks to train a model. So remember, once, you once you've done the training, what you end up with is a model, right? This model is the final product. And when you have a new data, we will feed the new data to the model and the model will predict the answer. So imagine um, I'm, I'm, I'm creating a model to say predict credit card fraud. So I, you know, I trained on the data, it took me one week to train my model, right? I got the model. Then I feed a new transaction to the model. And the model has to predict this is like fraud or not fraud very quickly, like milliseconds in fact. And that's exactly what the models do. Because remember the models, think of, you have to think of model like an executable code, right? You feed a bunch of input and immediately spit out like a fraud or not fraud, for example, in this example, right? Credit card example. So this prediction, is very, very fast. We are talking milliseconds fast, right? Even, 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 even faster than this, right? Because it has to be. But the training can be, you know, can take a long time. So is that gonna make sense, guys, the difference between training and um, 
So it's sometimes called inference or prediction, same thing, right? So training, very computer intensive. Prediction is usually very quick because you know, all the hard work is done already. Yeah. All right. One more thing and we'll wrap, wrap this up. One thing I told was okay, data size was model size. So, and this is a lot of misconception around this one. So that's why I want to explain this. So let's say I'm um, you know, writing a model to do face recognition. So I'm training on a massive amount of data. Let's say my data is like 100 terabytes of data. So I have like a massive cluster. I'm training this on, right? And my training takes one week. Again, you know, I'm sort of using all the hyperboles, right? Just to kind of, you know, illustrate the point. I'm training on a massive data for a long time. And finally, when I get a model, my model is pretty small. Let's say just 50 meg. So I went from like 100 terabytes of data to a model that just, you know, 50 meg in size. Because remember, models are final executable. And you know, let's say in your iPhone, you know, when, when you're doing the, you know, doing a face unlock, when I push a new model, just 50 meg is nothing, right? I mean, you know, my phones now are hundreds of gigs of memory, so the model can be pushed into your phone very easily. So that kind of makes sense, guys. Data size was a model size, right? There are factors of you know magnitude different, right? And a lot of people that that's why a lot of people get confused and say, how is this you know large data can fit into my iPhone? No, that's not, you know, that's not what's happened, right? We are using the data to create a model. Model size is pretty small. And that's what gets deployed to your iPhone or you know, to your Fitbit or whatever, you know, what have you. Yeah. So data size versus model size. Good guys. Um, let me kind of stop here because I know we are slightly over the time. Um, I, I, but I, I thought we sort of covered a lot of things here and I'll, I'll, I'll cover the rest later. Um, any questions on this one, guys? Again, um, uh, we are gonna continue on this one um, uh, next week, but I, I thought it was very important for us to understand some of the basic terminologies, right? Because when I talk to a lot of people, like, you know, there's a lot of confusion about some of the basic fundamentals. So hopefully, you know, this cleared, you know, cleared them up. Yeah. All right, guys, any questions on this one? If not, uh, let's do this. Let's kind of wrap this up. Um, USA, you know, you, again, you know, these links are live, right? You can, you know, the, the document's going to be alive. Um, if you want to come to the class next week, please go through the setup process. And if you have any questions, please post here, please, right? Um, and then, you know, all the all the all the links and discount codes are in the document, right? So. So the max size for the class, I think we kept it like. 20 or 25, I think, because uh, this is a hands-on class. So I want to make sure, um, you know, like for example, if you run into any issues in the lab, I had trauma, I have time to help you guys out. Uh, so yeah, right. So it's going to be a smaller class. So today's class was kind of like, you know, I think we're like almost like, you know, sometimes, you know, 70 people or something. The actual class is going to be maybe 20, 30 people. Yeah. So up to you guys, right? So yeah. Good guys. Again, so hopefully uh, today, was productive for you guys. I you know the goal for today was uh, get you guys up and running with uh, you know uh, with machine learning and give you guys some sample sample slides and also some sample um, uh, code so you can get up and running. And we'll continue this next week. Cool. Any questions, guys? Shoot me an email. Um, you guys have my email right here, right in the doc. Or you know, if you're entering the class, you can um, contact Thomas as well here. His email, and uh, we'll work with you guys. All right, thank you so much, guys. And uh, let me wrap it up here. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Yep, thank you.
Um, or I guess hang back if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer any question you guys might have. Uh, I know it's a little late if you're on the East Coast, so I'm, that's why I'm ending the class right now. But if you have some um, time, hang around, please. I'll, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yep. Oh yeah, so the, um, the, this is being recorded, actually. I will send out a recording uh, by tomorrow. Yeah, you'll definitely get there. So we, we, already, we have your emails. I will send out an email. Yep. All right, let me stop the recording here because we are done with the um, um,